Hi, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Chang. Uh, I've been working at Fluxus Inc. for about six years now, handling global business. And today we'll be talking about global digital distribution. Okay. So before we begin, I just want to give an introduction to Fluxus Inc. So Fluxus Inc. started as a music label in 2002. And over the years, uh, we've developed you know, different business lines. But most recently, we launched our global digital distribution business at the end of 2016. So for Fluxus, our specialty lies in bringing Korean content overseas and then overseas content into Korea and navigating the, the obstacles in doing so. So hopefully today um, I'll be able to share some insights uh, that can help you when you try to bring your content to the world. Um, here we have an overview. Today we'll be talking about, uh, to begin we'll be talking about making an album for the world and what that means. Then we'll take a look at the global market and the characteristics it has in relation to distribution. And finally, we'll take a look at how you can share your music to the world. So making an album for the world. What is a song? So I'm sure everybody here is familiar with these concepts in terms of the two rights that make up a song. The first is a copyright, which is connected to the composition. And then the second is the master right, which is connected to the sound recording. So here I've actually included a third box. It's not a right, but it's actually a method of monetization of the song. And so in this case, we'll be talking about licensing because that's the most common way when working with uh, music services and digital distribution. So we can look at the life of the song. Uh, to begin, we're uh, making the song and that's where the copyright will arise. And you know, once you've completed making the song and everything sounds good, you've written the lyrics, you jump in the studio and then you would record your song. And that's where the master right uh, arises. And so normally for labels or artists, you know, this is the, the majority of the work. And, but when you are you know, preparing a song for the world, there's actually a very critical third uh, component which is the metadata attached to the song. So metadata is the information that identifies the song as the song. And of course it identifies the song as connected as it is connected to you. And so the reason why this is so important is because if you are sending your hard work into the world, you know, licensing it to various music services, you wanna make sure that uh, your work is easily identifiable and easily found when on the services because the music services use this metadata to determine what song gets paid what royalties. So that this will ensure that you will be getting paid what you deserve. In the into the global markets, uh, we'll be looking at to begin. We'll be looking at the supply chain for distribution and payment. So you know very simply, the rights owner will be providing metadata to the distributor and then the distributor will be providing it to the music services. Or in the case that you are handling distribution on your own, you would bypass the distributor and work directly with the music service. So at that step, the music service then will take your content, make it live on the service. And hopefully, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of users listening to it. And, uh, and so from that point, the music service will collect all those listens and take that data and generate it into a report. And these reports are what's used to determine the royalty payments that you receive. So in this supply chain, the two chain links that I'll be looking at closer today is the distributor and the music service. So in the, in the world market, the top music services are shown here, and I'm sure everyone's also familiar with these services, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Tidal, and YouTube. But the important thing that I also want to illustrate, though, is although that these services you know, do cover a lot of the digital, uh, the digital listeners, music streamers, um, that they're not the only music services that exist in the world. There are actually hundreds of different music services, uh, big and small, and in different territories. So for example, in the MENA region, Angami is a music service that's actually very, very popular. And um, specifically, I can mention in Korea, um, none of these global music services are actually dominating the domestic market, but domestic music services like Melon. 
So the important thing to see here is you need to figure out when you want to bring your content to the world, what is the best strategy? So if you want to try and reach as many people as possible, then working with somebody or finding a way to get your content on these listed music services would be your best bet. However, if you have a specific strategy that's looking at specific territories, like for example, if you want to come to Korea, then the best strategy would not be working with these services because they are not at the top of the, uh, of the Korean market. You'd want to find a way to work with the domestic Korean music services. Also, the uh, delivery standards in the world market are also going to be a little bit different. So this, these, uh, I'm highlighting just three different uh, standards that I think that you should be familiar with or your distribution partner should be familiar with, which are the lead time, delivery method, and metadata. So lead time. Lead time is the time for when you deliver your content to the service and when the service opens your content. So as you can see here, uh, as you can see below, for the global music services like Apple and Spotify, they request a two week lead time to ensure that your content can open properly. Because this is because a lot of the, uh, you know, there's so much content that is going through those music services that they're gonna need some extra time just to make sure everything is, uh, is, is ready to go to open on release day. This is a little bit different, like in the Korean case, the lead time is actually only about one to two days. And that's, uh, be, and the reason for this is because of the unique uh, market conditions that exist in Korea, Korea that allow for this. Next, you'll want to see the delivery method. And uh, you know, if you are trying to get your content to the world, uh, you or your distributor should be very familiar with DDEX and the DDEX standard. So what exactly is DDEX? So DDEX stands for Digital Data Exchange. It was founded in 2006 and it is a standards setting organization. So this organization was founded by a bunch of media companies, music companies, rights, owner, com rights owners and tech companies as a way to communicate large quantities of data across companies. So you can see on the, on the bottom right, the one major benefit about using DDEX is that it's very, very scalable. Convenience wise, it can be a little bit difficult because there is a technical aspect to it, but it's not that difficult to, to learn. So <clears throat> the purpose of DDEX is, uh, the, pur the purpose of DDEX is to create an effective communication between companies. So companies that are sending data will know exactly how to send the data and the companies that are receiving the data will know what to expect when receiving the data. And by having this end-to-end -end understanding, efficiency of the businesses can increase, of course it can reduce costs and also increasing revenues. So just a quick example of what a standard might be. So for DDEX, when you deliver your metadata, they ask for it in XML and this XML file does have a specific format. And so this is, uh, this is used through every step of the, the supply chain. Sound source and, and album art are also specified at specific uh, file types. And so, you know, something as simple as this, it can save a lot of time when you're passing contents from one to the other. Okay. And then lastly, um, just looking at the basic metadata. So for, you know, whether wh whatever country you're from or wherever you're looking to go, these are the basic kind of metadata that everyone's familiar with. But what we need to look at here is when you are going to uh, global music services, there'll actually be a lot more metadata that needs to be identifiable because they have such large amount of quantity, just providing this amount of basic metadata there's gonna be a lot of overlap and there's a risk of your content being lost in the deluge of, of, uh, of content that exists on those services. So specifically, I want to talk about ID codes because ID codes are the strongest form of metadata used to identify your content. And the global standard is a combination of two different codes. The first is a UPC code and the second is an ISRC code. So a UPC code, a universal product code, you'll typically recognize this as a barcode. And this is used on the album as a product. But the ISRC code is used to identify specific recordings. And so 
uh, for, for uh, your releases to the world, you will need to prepare these codes and you will need to know how to register and receive, the, receive these codes to apply to your metadata. So whether you're doing it by yourself or you are working with a distributor, um, it is very important that you know, these, this information is handled well, because like I said before, it's the strongest form of metadata to identifying your work. Okay. And so finally, uh, we're gonna talk about sharing your music and how to, how to go about doing that. So there's actually two main ways to go about sharing your music. One is you can do it on your own. And in this case, you would just be taking on the role of the distributor or on the other end of the spectrum, you can just work with the distributor. Now, this isn't an either or, there are you know, in-betweens and mixtures of both. So for example, if you want to uh, handle your own metadata and prepare everything before you send it off to a distributor, that's you know, definitely possible. You just need to find the right distributor that will work with your business situation. <clears throat> So here, um, in the case that you want to uh, dilute, do your own distribution, there's two key components that you will need to follow and handle on your own. The first being having the deal with the music service. Without a deal, there's no uh, way for you to get your content onto the service. And this is typically the most difficult part of trying to do your own distribution, is just simply trying to get a deal with them. In the case that you do get a deal, uh, you will also need to know how to manage your catalog, register the codes that we spoke about before. There are other little uh, bits of administration that you will need to handle properly in order to get, uh, in order to be effective, in order for your content to be effective. On the other side, if you work with a distributor, um, for all, in, in general, there's no real uh, issue with distributors in terms of what they do of getting your content onto the services. But the most important thing here is finding a distributor that's right for your business. So determining you know, what kind of distributor is right for your business, I've broken it down into uh, three main categories of distributor. So the first is a global distributor which of course will deliver your content globally. The second is a local distributor, which obviously will deliver your content locally. But then the third is a, uh, a mixed distributor. And in this case, it's a, you, know, you can think of a distributor that partners with another distributor to fill any business gaps. So how can you go about choosing what's right for you? Um, so we can just sort of look at pros and cons of some of these. It's not. It's not an extensive list, but just to get an idea for global, global distributors, um, the pros would be that it can give you access to the most number of music services. Typically, global distributors will also be able to provide you with a, a different, uh, a large option of tools like uh, content management systems, a ways to, way to see analytics, look at your revenues. However, being a, a large uh, global distributor, there is a chance that your content might not be prioritized and other partners that they work with will be. Also, it might be difficult that they might not want to work with you in the first place because you might not fit their business model well. In the case that you do uh, are, are able to work with a global distributor, uh, you might not be getting the best revenue share deal in that situation. Now, on the other hand, on the, on the opposite of the spectrum, you can look at a local distributor. A local distributor will most likely be able to provide you with more of a direct contact and they will be able to work more closely with you. And of course, uh, they will be specialized to that region. They will know their territory much better than a global distributor would. However, just like the global uh, distributor, there are some cons here, which is that a local distributor, their reach and their coverage might not be as extensive as a global distributor. And of course, with limited reach, your earning potential will also be limited. And finally, the mixed, uh, the mixed distributor. So this is the best of both worlds and the worst of both worlds. So a mixed distributor will be able to provide the attention that you need. They'll be able to focus on your content and they'll also be able to uh, get your music onto uh, all the global music services. But the important thing to notice here is that because they're working with another distributor to fill the content gaps, typically a global distributor, the royalties are going to be shared by an additional partner. So even though you might think you have a, a good royal revenue share uh, with your 
with your distributor, it actually might be lower because they're working with another distributor uh, to fill their business needs. And of course, um, your, your partner distributor will also face the same issues uh, that you would when working with a global distributor. So, you know, looking at all these uh, different types, it'll really come down to uh, depending on your business need. So for example, if you know, your goal is to just try to reach and get your content out on as many services as possible, then of course a global uh, distributor would be working for you. But in the case that you, know, you don't want to necessarily uh, go so wide and you want to spend a little more care and effort into specific territories, you might want to look at a number of different local distributors to assist you when delivering content to those locales. And of course, you know, the mixed content, if you're somewhere in between that and you want to try and customize uh, how you handle your content, maybe you don't want to go to every music service, maybe you just want to focus on the, the top, uh, top music service like just Apple and Spotify, this is where a, a mixed distributor can come and help you. So again, it really comes down to what your business needs are and then doing the uh, due diligence to find the correct partner that fits the solution you need. Okay, so just to wrap everything up and about what we've talked about, uh, to start the, you know, when making music content for a global digital distribution, it can't just end with the recording. You need to make sure you're taking care of that last step with the, the metadata and properly identifying your music so you know that you know, your content will be connected to you, there won't be any confusion, and of course music services will know exactly who to send those royalties to. And then of course, secondly, you need to understand that there are differences between you know, what you might be used to or what you're familiar with and adjusting your business to uh, to those new standards. And doing so, that, is, that will make your music content uh, be more effective when you do release it. If you're spending time dealing with, um, dealing with just small issues that could have been taken care of if you had adjusted, adjusted your methodology, then that's time wasted. Third is looking at the different music services that are right for you. You know, depending again on your business strategy, you might want to choose specific music services. You might want to try to reach all of them. You might want to limit and grow your fan base slowly. So it really is dependent on, on what it is that you want to do. And similarly, if you can't handle that yourself, working with, the, working with a distributor that will provide the right solution for your business need will also increase the effect, effectiveness of your uh, your your global digital distribution. So, thank you very much. Hopefully, you know that was able to help you in in your journey to uh, distributing and getting your content out to the world. You know, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and email me, and I'll uh, do my best to to start a conversation with you. So, thank you very much. <laughs>